Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video. A couple times a week, we're gonna be featuring my podcast, 50% Facts, some snippets and highlights. Each episode, we dive into one topic, one question, and in the first half of the podcast, me and Jim McD analyze and try to talk about and ask questions on the question. Then in the second half of the podcast, we bring in the world's leading expert to give you everything you want to know on such topics. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you want to find the full episodes, there is a 50% Facts podcast YouTube channel, and it's available on all platforms, iTunes, Spotify, et cetera, et cetera. Check it out. Give this thing a thumbs up. Tell your friends, and I hope you enjoy. Our other question was this. We keep seeing recommendations about using additional salt, additional sodium for performance. And, here's, and like historically, it, we've been told to try to reduce sodium. And then you see people saying, oh, use Himalayan sea salt in your water or whatever X number of times a day for, um, for increased performance. What, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, so that is actually a common question. You know, if I'm recommending a certain type of food or sometimes I actually recommend like microwavable uh, meal replacement type of you know, lean cuisine type of things. And, and this is for convenience. And people are like, but what about the sodium? And, and yeah, you know, high sodium diets tend to be uh, related when they look at these epidemiological studies related to cardiovascular disease. That probably has to do with um, blood pressure. Mm-hmm. But, but when, when it comes down to individuals, if you don't have high blood pressure, you really have to worry about the sodium, and especially if you're active. So, like, when you're really active... You, you know, you're sweating, you're losing some electrolytes that way, and having that adequate sodium can be beneficial. I'm not aware of any studies that, that show adding additional salt to a, a, a standard kind of diet is beneficial unless you're just, unless you, you're not getting enough in your actual diet. Mm-hmm. So I'm unsure if adding Himalayan salt is, is beneficial. In fact, you know, some people go too far and use sea salt and some of those Himalayan salt and don't get enough uh, iodine in their diet, you know. So, oh. um, uh, you know, iodized salt came about because people were not getting enough iodine in their diet and, and they get, got, began getting goiters. Goiters, that yeah. Was, that was the, the leading cause of hypothyroidism at, at one point. Um, uh, and now... They still have that issue in, in other, like, third world and other countries. But we're starting to see a, uh, some case studies pop up. In fact, I've had a few patients where all they were using was sea salt. And they had hypothyroidism, not because they had autoimmune disease like what I have. I have Hashimoto's uh, mm. thyroiditis, which is which is the leading cause of hypothyroidism um, uh, in the United States. But now we're starting to see some people get hypothyroidism from an iodine deficiency. Uh, and it's because they're not using iodized salt. So anyway, that's just kind of a side point. So um, so the reality is is that probably too low of sodium is is an issue. We're starting to see there's mm. probably a sweet spot, and there's the the uh, the leading experts go back and forth, and you see these new studies based on you know they do these urinary studies looking at potassium and sodium, and and showing that hey, it looks like the people that live the longest aren't eating the the least amount of salt or sodium and there's probably something to that when you decrease your salt or sodium so much you do see some possible adverse effects and then obviously when you increase it past a certain threshold there's there there can be some adverse effects as well especially for those who are sensitive and have uh, increased blood pressure levels to it so on on a population you know basis it's it's hard to give a certain recommendation because it's like yeah, you know everybody should be eating less salt and then it confuses people because you know instead of focusing on probably calories which they should be they're now they're thinking about sodium and the individuals who don't have high blood pressure probably don't need to worry about it if they're eating an otherwise healthful diet uh, uh, including a lot of potassium and other high nutrient types of foods which can counteract that elevated sodium intake so. Uh, I, I'm 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 more of look at it, I, you know. I, I like the epidemiological studies and the public health thing, but I I also look at it from an individual standpoint. If, 
somebody's relatively lean and they're active, they can handle a lot more sodium mm. and, and not have adverse effects. What Going about more a, to, you know, go ahead? Uh, sorry about that. What about like uh, Gatorade and some of these drinks out there that you know their whole commercials about sodium and et cetera, et cetera? Uh, you mentioned electrolytes earlier. Uh, I think potassium, a couple others, uh, obviously are lost when we sweat or exercise. Uh, is it is it that um, necessary that we replenish them ten seconds after we lose them, uh, or like you kind of said, uh, for the normal person just to get them in your diet throughout the day, um, plus some water might be enough. Yeah. So. Unless you're doing intense exercise, uh, you know, 30 to 60 minutes, losing losing multiple pounds from sweat, you know, if you're just a, a recreational weightlifter, you're not going to need Gatorade. I mean, this is where we see issues with, with younger kids. Um, mm. like, all they're doing is drinking Gatorade because they thought, oh, it's a sports drink. It's good for me. And, right. You know, we're seeing how increased obesity obviously uh as you know um and i have to then go like look just drink water for most of my patients just drink water it's it's these you know triathletes and um runners and not just you know a few mile run it's 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 it's, it's more people training for uh, marathons uh and um really intense exercisers uh and also you know you can there can be some benefit if if uh, if you're thinner and, you, and you're trying to gain weight, obviously, and yeah. you're trying to replenish your glycogen, and you're, you're working out more than once a day too, because it's not just the the electrolyte; it can also be the uh, glucose and, and fructose as well that can help with with that. But in general, most people probably don't need to. Yeah, I think we tell. Mike and I both tell powerlifters all the time, you don't need to do that stuff because you're not really glycogen depleting and you're not really sweating enough to matter. Yeah, Some of them no. are sweaty because they're fat, but that's a totally different story. <laughs> it, it's, it's really not It's not worth the calories to drink the, uh, the no, Gatorade. No, absolutely not. Tastes good. I mean, some people, I, you know, Propel is one. It's, it's the, yeah. the calorie-free one that I generally recommend. If you need something kind of sweeter, then yeah, maybe go towards that. But otherwise, just drink water you're going to get enough electrolytes in your food uh, for most people and like you said maybe a little chipotle here and there or a little <laughs> microwave uh, uh meal is yeah. not gonna end your life if you're uh healthy and exercising exactly awesome well i th i think that covers the, the both topics to the extent that we need to on this show uh where can people find you great um so find me on instagram uh instagram.com slash Dr. Nadolsky, D-R-N-A-D-O-L-S-K-Y. And then also I'm part of the Renaissance Periodization crew, so uh, cool. check us out at renaissanceperiodization.com. That's a good crew, man. I uh, hung out with Mike a bunch in L.A. a bunch of times. Really, really cool oh, guys. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a great guy. Him and Nick are my faves. So, um, yeah, check us out there. Awesome. Thanks so much, man. Thank you very much. You got it. <laughs> Bye. Have a great Bye. one. And ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed the podcast. If you do, please share it with your friends. It helps us grow a lot, and we really appreciate it. Give us a rating and review. You can find me, Asylum Mike, with 2Ks, Instagram, Twitter. 50% facts on Instagram. Give it a follow for all updates on the show. I am at the Jim McD on all the social media, and we will get you next time.